I think the biggest barrier that's stopping us from getting better outcomes in the urban water sector is that people can still be very siloed, whether it be departments or people working as consultants. So we need to transcend those barriers, or silos if you like, to get better outcomes. As a global Sydney is facing huge challenges around population growth, the way it houses people, contributing to communities' health and wellbeing, being and making sure that we've actually got jobs for the future, jobs for our generation, for generations to come. Yeah, the key barriers we need to overcome are probably to stop having too much interference from the political and government side and actually let the utilities and the experts get on with optimising and getting an, uh, optimising the system and getting a solution that really is the long-term best outcome for the city. We're at the pointy end, Sydney Water, of implementing some of these innovations. Um, and um, we have a lot of things that we need to coordinate and deal with. Um, we are the ones with the customers, we're the ones with the stakeholders, and we're the ones that have to deliver the, these types of infrastructure. Is that we have entered an era whereby resources are limited and that collaboration across different sectors, different stakeholders is a, a necessity to enable cities of the future to progress to greater resiliency, greater livability. And that means macroeconomic reform uh, is going to be the key agenda for bringing different agencies together. Integrated planning and integrated governance. And the reason is that it allows to unlock co-benefits between sectors. It allows to look at a whole system and maximize the benefits for the entire community.